Hi, my name is Hiro Ono at NASA JPL in Pasadena. Uh, I really wanted to present in person, but I am expecting a baby right around this time. So I can present with this pre-recorded movie instead. Is there anybody out there that search for extraterrestrial life with the eels robot? So we're gonna start our story from the end of a spacecraft named Cassini. Cassini's grand finale is a brand new adventure. 22 dives through the space between Saturn and its rings. As it repeatedly braves this unexplored region, Cassini seeks new insights about the origins of the rings and the nature of the planet's interior, closer to Saturn than ever before. On the final orbit, Cassini will plunge into Saturn, fighting to keep its antenna pointed at Earth as it transmits its farewell. In the skies of Saturn, the journey ends as Cassini becomes part of the planet itself. Cassini was a highly successful mission. The spacecraft spent 13 years orbiting around Saturn, visited many of its moons, and made phenomenal discoveries. But it was not just about science. The pictures she took were stunningly beautiful, artistic even. For example, look at these beautiful rings or the mysterious hexagonal storm on the north pole of the planet. What are these black bands? These are the shadows casted by the rings on the cloud top of the planet. The triple crescents, they are three moons of Saturn, Titan, Rhea, Mimas. And this is the aurora of Saturn seen in UV wavelength. Titan is the largest mount among the 82 moons of Saturn. This is the only world in the solar system besides Earth where it rains. It's the rain of methane. The rainfall forms rivers of methane which flows into the lakes of methane. And this is the moon named Tethys, which is almost completely made of water ice. Now, here is my favorite picture from Cassini, named The Day the Earth Smiled. This was taken at the moment when the sun is behind Saturn. And all of us, the 8 billion human beings, are actually in this picture, just in one pixel of it. Can you find it? It's here. How small our world is compared to the vastness of the universe. And you can find many other dots in the picture here and there. Here's one, there is another one. <laughs> it's hard to find. Um, but, um, and, and these dots are mostly the moons of Saturn, while some of them are planets actually, like Mars. Uh, now, look at 
this dot that is orbiting in the E ring of Saturn. E ring is this, you know, blurry uh, white ring that is not very visible from the Earth, uh, but you can clearly see it from this picture. This moon, named Enceladus, is the central character of today's story. Enceladus is a relatively small moon, about 500 kilometers or 300 miles in diameter. Its surface area is about the same as Texas, but completely covered by water ice. Well, ice is not what made this moon special. There are, you know, many moons in the outer solar system around Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Triton, excuse me, Neptune, that are made of ice. What makes this moon in Celsius remarkable is this. Here and there, something is coming out from the South Polar region. What are they? They turned out to be water vapor ejected from active geysers. And the ice particles that forms the E-ring of Saturn turned out to be from these geysers of Enceladus. But where does the water come from? Scientists believe that there is an ocean below the thick shell of ice, and its water is ejected through the cracks of ice in the South Polar region. What's even more interesting is that this ocean is in direct contact with the rocky core at the center of the, the moon, which supplies various chemical, chemicals. And there are some indications that there might be hydrothermal vents, like in the ocean on our, of Earth. So we've got water, chemicals, and energy in this instilled subsurface ocean, and these are the ingredients of life. So, is there anybody out there? Cassini flew through the plumes multiple times. It came as close as 49 kilometers or 30 miles to the surface and investigated the chemical composition of the plume. And it detected various kinds of simple and complex organics that can be found in our bodies. So, is there life or not? Unfortunately, with Cassini data, we cannot be sure. We cannot go beyond the possibility. To answer this question, we have to get in there. But how? Here's how we think we can make it possible. EELS is a snake robot that would enable access to the subterranean ocean of Enceladus to search for extraterrestrial life. or Exobiology Extant Life Surveyor is the name of the robot that we are creating. 
And when we say a robot, it is not just a piece of hardware. It's a cyber physical system made of highly capable hardware and machine, machine intelligence. It has a highly versatile 48 degrees of freedom body with active skin propulsion, which is driven by proprioceptive control, meaning that it senses the force and uses information to control itself. Its machine intelligence modulates its own behaviors based on the understanding of risks, and 3D situational awareness is provided by our sensor head, equipped with a LiDAR, four pairs of stereo cameras, and LED illuminations. It, we have GSC, the ground supporting equipment, and op system, and science payload. We built the first version of the EELS robot called EELS 1.0 and brought it to the Pasadena ice rink in the middle of the night. This movie was from one of the very first tests on real ice. And it worked amazingly. We commanded more complex motion patterns like following the figure eight. Again, it worked great. But you know, the ice rink is flat. The ice on Enceladus would not be flat. So we created a bump using ice simulant tiles and tested if the robot can go over it. These tiles have a slippery surface like ice and actually used by professional skaters. Look how the robot is strongly climbing up the slope, which is great. But you know, what this robot is really meant for is not to move forward, but to move down vertically. And that is much, much more difficult. So, this month, we achieved the first baby step towards vertical mobility. We put the robot in a wooden frame, placed ice blocks on the walls, the robot pushed the both walls and used its side screws to climb up. So take a look, it's coming now. Okay. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. I'm very close to hitting this. Yeah, just do it quickly. Give me a key. Three, two, one. Oh! Hey! Oh. Oh. It's on! It's in the air! <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the guy shout it out? It's in the air. Yes, it's in the air, although it's just a few centimeters. So it's just a small step for a giant leap. Okay, you know, these are great, but, you know, lab tests are not enough to prove that this robot can go down the Enceladus vent. So we are doing field tests at Athabasca Glacier in Canada, where there are vertical holes like this called Molen. And our plan um, is this. So there are three phases. In phase one, which is happening actually right now, we do not bring the whole robot. Instead, we only bring the sensor head and we will bring it down manually to scan the interior of the Mullins. Uh, the team has spent a lot of time to get prepared. We hired the professional ice climbers and did a safety training on the lab. We also built a sensor head for mapping the Mullins. We tested the sensor head in the high bay on the lab. We hung this rainbow plate tunnel to practice the uh, operation in the Mullin. And you can see that we pull it up and pull it down, turn off the light, uh, turn off the LED, uh, pull it up and 
Down again. And this week, right now, the team is on the Athabasca Glacier. I am not proud of it for an obvious reason. I have a baby, which is more important for me. But this is happening right now. Very exciting. They are sending us pictures and movies every day. Uh, these are photos of movies just a, a few days old. Some are even taken today. It's a beautiful place. And the team found a lot of suitable moldings for testing. Then we successfully lowered the sensor head and got tons of data. So what comes next? In the next year, in phase two, we will bring the EOS robot to the glacier and do the first test of vertical mobility over there. And in phase three, we will go deep down the molen and the robot will bring, will bring and deploy a sensor package called CryoEgg at the deepest possible point in the molen. Once we master the glacier, the natural next step would be the moon, or maybe asteroids, uh, to do a tech demo in space. Then, maybe 20 or 30 years from now, yes, space exploration takes a long time, but within my lifetime, hopefully, I am turning 40 soon, by the way, I want to make the Enceladus mission happen. If this happens, what will we learn? Will it find alien life? If so, it will be a discovery that will forever stick to the history. Because we can finally find the answer to one of the biggest questions of humankind. Are we alone in the universe? Finally, like humans, in space exploration, things are passed down from generation to generation. Back in 1980s, the Voyager 2 spacecraft passed near Enceladus and found that the surface of the southern hemisphere does not have many craters, meaning that it's young. Something must be going on. Then, about 30 years after that, Cassini discovered the geysers and the evidence of the subsurface ocean. Now we are working on eels to hopefully go back to Enceladus someday and dive into the geysers. And surely eels will not be the last. It will find answers to many questions we have now, and also it would find even more new questions. This is exactly the way we make progress in space exploration. It takes a long time because the universe is so big and we know so little. And we are proudly a part of this big multi-dimensional endeavor. Finally, finally, I want to acknowledge that this work is made possible by so many hardworking engineers and scientists. Literally, this is a dream team. If there's any team that can make this happen, it will surely be this team. So thank you very much. Uh, let me close this story by a quote from Carl Sagan. Somewhere, something incredible is waiting to be known. If you have questions, please uh, feel free to let me know. Again, thank you very much. May the force be with you. <laughs>